Number 68, a 500-ohm resistor, an uncharged 1.5 microfarad capacitor, and a 6.16 voltage EMF are connected in series. Letter A, what is the initial current? All right, so first of all, um, if, we're gonna, if we're going to create a current in this particular uh, circuit, it is a, basically a discharging type of a circuit. It is not charging anymore. We're discharging the stored charge, okay? In other words, what that tells us then is that we're going to be using this, we should be using this formula, all right? That the voltage at some point in time, you can call it the final voltage, it doesn't really matter, all right? I'll call it V sub T, or some point in time is equal to then the initial voltage multiplied by base E raised to the negative T over RC. Now, the T simply represents the elapsed time, okay? <clears throat> and the R and the C represent the resistance of the circuit and the capacitance of the circuit. So one thing is you might be saying, well, okay, that's great, but uh, hey, bud, we're trying to solve for uh, current here. You got voltage. Yeah, yeah. Well, that's the formula that's given. So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do a substitution. In other words, remember Ohm's law, that V is equal to IR. In other words, what I can substitute here instead of V sub T is I could write I sub T, or at the current at some point in time, uh, multiplied then by the uh, resistance at some point in time, will equal then the current initially multiplied by the resistance initially, okay, times then E raised to the negative T over RC. Now, a couple of things we need to consider. The resistance doesn't change. How do I know that? Well, I just know it. The resistance doesn't change. You've only seen changing resistance when temperature changes. They didn't say anything about temperature changing here, so I will assume that they are the same. And if they're the same mathematically, they will cancel. All right? Resistance is kind of independent there. So in other words, now this breaks down to just this formula, right? Now, they said, what is the initial current? Hmm. So initial current. They're looking for this thing, right? Isn't that correct? So... If this is the initial current, right, and you wanted to, let's say, solve this thing, right, for initial current, it would then look, you would just divide this term on out, right? So let's just go bada bing, bada boom, just like that. Okay? Now, let's start simplifying some stuff. How much time has elapsed if it's initial? I, I think zero, right? So don't even worry about plugging anything in there. If this is zero in the numerator, this whole thing now becomes... This whole thing now, let me just move this up a little bit. This whole thing will now become I sub T over E raised to the negative zero over RT. Well, this the whole thing just goes to zero. Negative zero is just zero. And E to the zero or any number raised to the zero is just one. So in other words, what this is telling us that uh, the initial current here uh, will equal the current at that point in time. And uh, yeah, right. I mean, it didn't really help at all. All, it, all it's saying is that the final current at some point in time is equal to the initial because the time was zero, right? But what that now allows me to do is that allows me to now realize that there is no time constant involved here. All I can now simply do is go back to my Ohm's law formula, okay, to be able to calculate the initial current. So it's just simply going to be the voltage, right, from the EMF of 6.16 is equal to that current multiplied by that resistance of 5 ohms. That's it. It just goes back to a basic problem, okay? So it's simply 6.16 divided by 500, and the ohms work out to be, or the current works out to be, uh, not the ohms, the current, uh, 0 0.0123 amps, all right? That's the initial current. Cool. All right. So now it's asking us for... So you didn't really have to do all that math, but... You know, instead of just kind of telling it to you, I figured I'll show you. Uh, so what is the RC time constant? That's straightforward letter B. That's tau, right? R times C. So the resistance here is going to be 500 ohms, they told us. The uh, capacitance, careful, that's in microfarads. We need that in farads, so that's going to be 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6th. And then calculate your uh, time constant, okay? And uh, it's going to be 500 times and 1.5 times 10 to the minus 6th. 7.50 times 10 to the minus 4th. And that's in seconds. Okay, that's basically the period. Okay, letter C. Uh, what is the current? Yeah, what is the current after now one time constant? Okay, 
So we had a formula, didn't we? Right? So let's do this. The formula we just had, I'm not going to derive it again, but it was the current. So this is really letter C now. I'm going to leave that tau up there for the time being. So it was that the current at some point in time is equal to that initial current multiplied by base E to the negative T over RC. Remember, RC here is just tau. It's a constant. So instead of writing RC there, I'm going to boop, substitute that on out. This is 7.5 times 10 to the minus fourth, right? That's a constant. And then it's asking, what is the current after one time constant? So wait a minute, what's then the elapsed time? Well, it's one time constant. So it's the same, right? So I would just plug in 7.5 times 10 to the minus fourth up there. And then mathematically, this should, would just work out to be negative one. All right, look at how nice that is. So this is now just going to be equal to, so we don't even need this. I'll just move it over to the side. So the initial current was 0 0.0123 multiplied by e to the negative one. And that's it. So let's take that value from before, that exact value, 0 0.01232. That's the current, multiply it by then second e to the negative one. So the current now becomes 4.53 times 10 to the minus third. Right, this is really to the minus second, so obviously you can see the current has now decreased. All right, so that should hopefully make sense. And my goodness, now it's asking us, what is the voltage on the capacitor after one time constant? So now this is literally the same thing. We're just going back to this formula. The original, that the, the voltage at some point in time is equal to the initial voltage multiplied by e to the negative t over rc. We already notice what's going to happen here, right? If it's one time constant, this whole thing just goes to one. So all I need to do to figure out that voltage at that period in time after one time constant is to know the initial. What's the initial? Up oh, 6.16. So it's the same fractional change, basically, as the current. The fra this represented the fractional change. Um, and the current had experienced the same fractional change. The value will be different, but the fractional change is the same. So what do we get? 2.27. 2.27. That looks like 7.7. That's because it is 2.27 volts. Guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I really do hope that helped. Please remember to help us out if you can and subscribe. Hit that like button. Tell your friends. I look forward to helping you with more problems. Take care.